So far in this course, we've discussed how we can simulate 3D objects in a coordinate system using numerical data. But in order to actually view those objects in the viewport of 3D software, or as a rendered image, we need to perform a few additional steps. In the next few videos, we'll discuss these steps involved in getting 3D geometry displayed on a two-dimensional plane, such as your monitor or, like I said, an image. First, let's recall that we can operate in different coordinate spaces. The coordinate spaces we're interested in here are world space, right? The, the universe that our 3D objects reside in, local space, which is a different coordinate space, allowing us to specify vertex locations relative to the object's origin or pivot, and camera space, which is basically just another local space uh, but specifically for a virtual camera object. All right, so in order to render an object, we first need to transform all of the object's vertices from their local coordinate space into world space. All right, so let's, let's start out here with the, uh, the transformation into world space. And what I'm going to do here is just draw out a few vertices that might represent uh, maybe a cube. Right, again, we are looking down along the y-axis, so we'll, uh, if this is an axis-aligned cube, we'll only be able to see one side of it. But, you know, here's the general idea. Uh, we'll, we'll probably have that object pivot right in the center of the object. And, again, in this local coordinate space, we are specifying the positions of each vertex relative to, of course, uh, origin, which like I said, is, is the location of that object's pivot. However, let's keep in mind that so far, you know, just, just with having this object, uh, all the vertices of this object represented in its local space, so far we don't actually know all that much about the object in regards to world space. The only information we really have to work with thus far is the position of the object in, in world space, right? So, you know, let's say this cube, again, to stick to our example, let's say this cube uh, was positioned right around here. The only information we really have available in world space is the fact that, uh, well, the, the object's pivot, which I've, you know, drawn out just as this dot right in the center, is positioned at, you know, some, some x, uh, y and z coordinates, right? You could think of that as a vector, right? Telling us where the object is located with regard to the world origin. We don't actually have any information about the vertices in, uh, or, or, or the object components in world space. So that's where this first transformation comes in, all right? This is called the model transformation. Model transformation let's let's just move that out of the way so that we have some space to work with here so we're going to see that world space acts as a kind of an intermediate step uh, which will allow us to kind of connect an, an object's local space to our destination here, which is going to be camera space. This is, uh, this is ultimately uh, how we are trying to represent these object vertices. And so world space is the intermediate step that will allow us to do that. So let's, uh, let's just say that our camera is located somewhere around here. Of course, it is going to have a world space position as well. And uh, yeah, so again, just to drive that point home, that, that world space is that intermediate step where we can get everything specified relative to the same origin, right? Uh, the, the object vertices relative to world origin as well as the camera relative to world origin. Now from here, there is a second transformation that we need to do on our way to rendering this scene or, or this cube. The next thing we need to do here is called the view transformation. So let's write that in 
view transformation. And with the view transformation, let's just again move this out of the way a little bit. With the view transformation, what we're trying to do is specify all the object vertices in relation to the camera's origin or the, or the camera's pivot. And so to help us visualize what this is going to look like, I'm actually just going to grab the entire contents of our scene here and just duplicate that. And let's move that over here onto this new coordinate space. And I'm also going to rotate it so that this makes a bit more sense. Uh, usually we have the camera pointing down the Z axis uh, with, with Z being uh, representing kind of like the depth of the scene. And, and, and so this, this is, is pretty much what we're going for here in camera space, right? So again, camera space is nothing fancy. It is just a local coordinate space for the camera itself. Uh, the camera is considered to be positioned at origin. And then, you know, after doing this transformation, all of the object uh, vertices are going to be, you know, again, transformed such that um, it, it's, it's as if we are looking at them from the camera's point of view. So keep in mind this, uh, th this kind of rotation I've done uh, for redrawing the scene from the camera's perspective. And as we saw in a recent video, uh, these transformations involve multiplying object vertex positions by homogeneous matrices. All right, so there, there will be a matrix for the model transform as well as the view transform. Now, once in camera space, everything inside the camera's view volume, which is really just, you know, everything that the camera can see, right? everything inside its field of view, essentially, all of that stuff is going to be transformed into an intermediate space called the canonical view volume, or in, in this course, I'm going to call it the CVV, just because that is a bit less of a mouthful. Now, the CVV allows for different types of projections uh, when translating this 3D information into 2D information, right? So, uh, you know, we could, we could do an orthographic projection, for example, which doesn't take into account uh, depth information. We could, on the other hand, do a perspective projection, which actually literally moves object components around depending on their uh, their distance from the camera. Again, it's an intermediate step. So when all of the object components are transformed into the CVV, their depth information is still retained. Uh, so, so just to be clear, you know that this CVV is a three-dimensional box. Um, we can see, you know, it, it has it has certain boundaries. Maybe those boundaries might be uh, one, one, one and negative one, negative one, zero. That's, um, that's just an example of coordinates we could use for the CVV. And of course, different implementations in uh, different graphics packages are gonna use uh, potentially different coordinates for the CVV, right? But th this is just an example, all right? So when, when components are transformed into the CVV, we do retain their depth information. However, we've prepared the coordinates uh, for use in, in two-dimensional space, really, right? Like, we, we're going to have X and Y coordinates ready to go that uh, will, will enable us to, you know, display this on the two-dimensional surface, like a, like a, your monitor or, or an image or something like that. The Z coordinates that we're still hanging on to inside the CVV will aid us in performing depth-related tasks, such as determining uh, which order to draw the images or, or something like that. And now just to be clear, uh, what this transformation involves is just remapping the coordinates uh, of, the, of the, the components of the scene object, you know, as they're specified in camera space, you know, whatever, whatever these values might be, we're just going to remap those values into, well, uh, negative one to one, the, the range negative one to one for the x-axis. 
uh, we will we'll remap to again negative one to one on the y-axis. And then again with this example, just because we are uh, starting the CVV at uh, z equals zero and extending out to z equals one, we'll remap z coordinates to uh, the, the, the range zero to one. So this transformation is fairly, hopefully fairly easy to visualize as it's, it's just a simple remapping process uh, from, again, from camera space into this intermediate uh, canonical view volume.